22 teams had a chance to restart their NBA season but only 16 made it into the NBA playoffs. The other 6 weren't good enough. For some, the gap between their spot and the playoffs was just too big to cover. For others, they just purely disappointed. Hey guys, Purple Prince here and today we're gonna look at studs and duds from eliminated bubble teams. The Eastern Conference had just one team that was contesting for the final playoff spots and that was the Washington Wizards. Bradley Beal didn't play, Davis Bertans didn't play, and the Wizards were eliminated from the playoff contention fairly quickly. They lost the first 7 games of the bubble and won only the last one against the Celtics who played like their 10th best roster. While nobody was really expecting Washington to get into the playoffs, it's fair to say that the team disappointed. But there are always some positives to take away and one player I really liked was Thomas Bryant. The young wizard center was averaging about 13 points and 7 rebounds for the season, but with some added playing time and opportunity, he upped those averages to almost 19 points and 9 rebounds. He shot more than 40% from the 3 and added 2 blocks per game for good measure. If anything, Washington might have just found their center of immediate future. On the other hand, Mo Wagner was a big dud for the Wizards. I did think long and hard about naming Hachimura as a dud because I feel that without Beal, without Bertans, he had this great opportunity to become the leader of a team, get up some extra shots, instead he just was as he's been for the whole season. He averaged about the same amount of points and rebounds and he didn't really wow in any game. But he wasn't necessarily bad, just disappointing. Now Mo Wagner on the other hand was bad. He was never a star but he gave you a solid 9-5 from the bench, but in the bubble, those numbers dropped to just 5 points and 3 rebounds, and if that's not enough for being a dud, he shot just 36.8% from the field and an atrocious 15.4% from the 3. Well, at least he went viral after Giannis headbutted him, so that's a win. Let's move to the Western Conference where we have the New Orleans Pelicans. A lot of people were certain that Pelicans could make that 8th playoff spot in the West. Instead what they got was Zion unlimited minutes and 6 losses in 8 games. Disappointing. Let's start with the good though. The stud award goes to Josh Hart. He didn't shoot well in all games, but it seemed that he was the only player really interested in Pelicans making it to the playoffs. He brought energy on defense, he had strong rebounding and scoring games. Hart also finished real strong collecting 23 points, 14 rebounds and 6 assists against the Magic in the final game of the season. He really had just one really bad game against the Spurs where he got into quick foul trouble and attempted just one field goal. Otherwise, he scored in double digits in 5 games even though he's not one of the Pelicans main scoring options. And obviously, the defense. He just does that relentlessly. Duds? Oh boy. We can go a lot of ways with this. Zion was great in the minutes he played offensively, but he clearly didn't use the time off to get in shape. That's a dud. Brandon Ingram wasn't bad, but he wasn't a world beater either, so more was expected from him. Drew Holiday was very bad in my opinion. He shot the ball poorly just 29% from the distance, he was way too careless with the ball averaging more than 4 turnovers per game and even defensively he was way too apprehensive. But the biggest dud award goes to Lonzo Ball. You just can't go any other way with this. He started his bubble with 4 points on 2 of 13 shooting against Utah Jazz in a close loss. And he scored double digit points just in his last game where he somehow connected on 4 of his 6 3 point attempts. That last meaningless game saved his butt a bit, as before in the bubble his stats were 5.7 points on 26% shooting from the field and 19.2% from the 3. He still doesn't drive to the basket enough and there's a reason why as he just shot 42.9% from the free throw line in the bubble. That is obviously on just 1.2 free throw attempts a game. He was bad and inefficient. A total dud. A similar story happened to the Kings. They had a real shot for the playoffs but they totally blew it by losing the first 3 and 5 out of the first 6 games of the bubble. They got 2 wins in the end but nothing mattered by then already. For my stud award, I'll pick the Aaron Fox. It's hard to call someone a stud when he shoots just 21.9% from a 3 point line but even with all the 3 point woes, Fox averaged 26.2 points on 50.4% shooting. He scored double digit points in every game he played and had several great passing games as well. Fox is the future point guard for the Kings, and while we're still waiting to see if he can evolve into a lot more wins for his team, we at least are sure that he can score in bunches. As for my dud, Buddy healed. 
For a 20 point per game scorer and a distance shooter with a reputation, you would expect a lot more than 14.3 points he gave Sacramento in the bubble. And that's counting his 28 point effort against the Lakers who didn't need anything in the final seeding game. Before that last game, Hill was averaging just 12.3 points on 38.6% shooting from the field and 33% from the three. Or in other words, he wasn't there when his team really needed him. Going forward, we have the official death of San Antonio's playoff streak. After 22 consecutive seasons with playoff appearances, the San Antonio Spurs finally ended their historic run. They had it coming. They entered the bubble without LaMarcus Aldridge, who was out for the season and all was left in the hands of DeMar DeRozan. Spurs had an OK bubble winning 5 of their 8 games, but in the end they were out of the playoffs nonetheless. My stud for this team is Rudy Gay. He's not the Rudy Gay of old, but he provided some excellent scoring from the bench for the Spurs. In just 24.8 minutes per, he averaged almost 18 points and 6 rebounds on 47% shooting from the field and 46% from the 3. If anything, you could argue that he should have been playing more. At 34 years old, it seems like he's found his role as the scorer from the bench and if the starters could have picked up more slack, the streak could have been continued. No shame for Rudy Gay though, he was very good. Other strong candidates for this, Derek White and Keldon Johnson. As for Dud, I'll leave it to you guys. I wanted more from DeRozan, but I can't really argue about a player shooting almost 60% from the field. He's a different kind of player now than he was with the Raptors and the Spurs were short-handed. So no real duds for me on the Spurs. Oh, the Phoenix Suns. Could there be any duds on a team that was the only one to win every game in the bubble? Before the bubble, everyone was shaking their heads, why allow Phoenix to even participate in the bubble? They are so bad, right? As it turns out, the decision was correct and the Phoenix Suns were great. They clearly have a vision with their new head coach. Stud has to be Devin Booker. Not that we found out anything new about him, we knew he was very good, but in the bubble, he was great. 30.5 points on 50% shooting from the field game winner against the Clippers over Paul George and Kawhi. What more could you want? Finally, after a long period of time, Phoenix fans have something to be really excited about. It's a shame the gap between them and the playoffs was too big to cover, even with winning all the seeding games. And I won't give any duds for Phoenix as well. How can I call someone so bad if they won everything? Obviously nobody was that bad or didn't play enough to help the team lose. And finally, the Memphis Grizzlies. Very disappointing what happened to a seemingly safe position before the bubble. They lost Jaron Jackson to injury just two games in, Justice Winslow couldn't play, Tyus Jones had a sore knee, everything just went bad. I'll give my stud award to Jonas Valanciunas. He didn't have the best season, but in the bubble, he averaged 15.3 points and 11.5 rebounds on 57.3% shooting. He really was a great presence in the middle, regularly cleaning up the offensive glass as well. And at just 28 years of age, he could actually be inserted into Memphis' future plans. He did prove his value in the bubble. It's hard to do this, but I have to give my dud award to John ja Morant. For disclosure, he didn't have much help and this was a very hard task for somebody in their first year. But I have to be honest, 39% shooting from the field and 22.5% on threes just won't cut it. He still almost averaged a double-double with 19 points and 9.9 .9 assists, so I can't call him super disappointing, but I expected more. With all the other scoring options injured or not participating, he had to step up his game even more and failed to do so. But there's no shame in that. He is very good and with everyone coming back from the injuries, Memphis has a lot of good things going for them. Everything will be good, Memphis fans. So these were my studs and duds from the eliminated playoff teams. Do you agree with my picks or did you have other players in mind? Please mention all your thoughts in the comment section. Leave a like, share this video with others and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. This is Purple Prince and I'm out.